Hello, today we're going to be talking about centrifuging. Centrifuging is a very important technique because it allows us to separate things out by density. In today's experiment, I will be separating out cheek cells away from a saline solution. This here is our centrifuge. Our centrifuge works to separate out by density by spinning our tubes very, very quickly. These tabletop centrifuges can get up to 13.4 thousand RPMs or 13.4 thousand rotations per minute. Very, very quick speeds. To use the centrifuge, on the bottom left-hand side, there is an open button. Press that button and the lid here will pop up automatically. Gently pull up on this lid and remove the small inner lid inside by pulling straight up on the knob and placing that lid behind. Inside of our centrifuge here is the rotor. This particular rotor holds 12 tubes, so we can put 12 samples in here at once. The rotor is what spins our samples very, very quickly. It is very important when we're placing our tubes into the rotor to make sure that we have what's called a balanced centrifuge. What this means is that I cannot spin a single tube inside of my centrifuge. Why? Because a single tube inside of here, when this rotor begins to spin very, very quickly, will cause an uneven weight distribution across the rotor. What that means is the rotor, as this begins to spin and it spins more quickly, will start to rock. And it will start to rock more violently the faster the rotor spins. This can cause serious damage to the centrifuge and can also potentially harm yourself. So to prevent that, we balance our centrifuge by putting another tube with the same size tube and same volume of liquid inside of our rotor. This is now a balanced rotor. We can put even number of tubes in here. We can fill the entire rotor or we can put three tubes in here. That would be an equilateral triangle. So just make sure that your rotor is balanced before you begin spinning. The other thing that's important is to place the tube inside of your rotor here with the hinges facing away from the center of the rotor. This is important because your tubes do not spin straight up and down. And the pellet that I'm looking for in this case may not be very large. If I were to spin with the tube on an angle like this, when I look for my pellet, I know that it will be at the bottom of my tube, right underneath where the hinge is from my tube. Okay, so my tubes are in my centrifuge. My centrifuge is balanced. So before you spin, you wanna make sure you place that small inner lid back on the rotor. You will hear it snap into place and you can close the large outer lid here. If you do not have a balanced rotor and you do not have that small inner lid in place, your centrifuge will make a pretty loud noise. So it'll indicate to you that something's wrong and you can turn it off. Now we have to set the centrifuge to spin what we want it to do. Right underneath the screen where it says time, there are up and down arrows to use to set the time. I'm going to spin these for 15 seconds. So I'm going to use the down arrow to go to 15 seconds. On the left hand side is the speed. We already have these set at 13.4 thousand RPMs, but make sure you look at your protocol and set this to whatever particular speed uh, your protocol calls for. Make sure that if your centrifuging is in Gs and not RPMs, that you make that calculation to, so that you're spinning in RPMs instead of Gs. Okay, to start, we're going to press the start stop button. You are going to hear the rotor begin to spin. This is when you'll hear that very angry loud noise if something is unbalanced or you're missing that small inner lid. This is going to spin for approximately 15 seconds. When it's finished spinning, the lid here will pop up automatically. So we do not need to press the open button, button for the lid to pop back up for us. Inside of here, we should hopefully now have my pelleted cheek cell. So we're going to look for that at the bottom of our tube. Take the small inner lid off. I'm going to take out my tube here. And as we can see, as I mentioned, we now have a cheek cell pellet at the bottom of my tube right underneath the hinge because we spun our tube with the hinge facing out. Now this is useful for my experiment because I can pour off my saline solution and concentrate my particular cheek cells for this experiment. Of course, there are many applications for centrifugation, even if it's just simply to draw the liquid down to the bottom of your tube so that it's easier to make the pipette. I hope you've learned a lot and we'll see you next time.